I think my friend was taken to be a slave. I, 29, think my friend, 30, may have become a victim of human slash intimacy trafficking. What should I do? I met a friend a few years ago in Mexico. We usually keep in touch and hang out when I am in Mexico. Late last year she started telling me how she was thinking about going to the US legally or illegally, but she wasn't sure and kept her options open. Earlier this year she told me that she was thinking of coming to the US illegally because the legal route was becoming harder, even though many of her friends, some of her mutual friends, were able to come legally last year, but it just wasn't the same anymore. She told me that she was saving money and that she planned to cross over to the US in either late June or July. I was in Mexico these past two months and while I was there she told me about her plans to stay in LA with one of her friends and she had asked me if I could take some things of hers with me on my way home to Southern California because she couldn't take too many things with her as she was crossing on foot. I left for CA with her things in early August and she told me that she would cross on August 10th. This is where things start to get really fishy. My friend is always active on social media and WhatsApp. She is always posting statuses and stories. She documents every little thing. The night before she crossed the border she sent me a video of her in a safe house with other people who were crossing with her. She sent this video at 9 p.m. and told me they were waiting there and would cross at 10 p.m. I went to sleep and after that night I lost contact with her. This was on August 14th. Even though she was supposed to cross on the tent, she told me the smugglers were delaying and telling her different things and changing the day slash time. I woke up the next morning and sent her a message asking her what happened and the message was never delivered to her phone. I sent her messages all day and none of them ever got delivered. I immediately thought the worst because she sent me her location the night before and told me where they were headed. The track was only supposed to be about 1 hour and 30 minutes and she left at 9 p.m. and it was already 12 p.m. the next day. August 15th at around 4.30 p.m. the same day I received a message from her and she said that she wanted to let me know that she was fine. She made it across and she couldn't speak for very long and she sent me her location which I presume was from a safe house on the U.S. side of the border. She was online for about 4 minutes and disconnected. I told her to write down my number on a piece of paper just in case she gets lost or anything. She has my number, but the message never got delivered and still wasn't delivered before I went to sleep. At 10.30 p.m. I sent her a goodnight message that also didn't get delivered and I went to sleep. The next morning I woke up with a message from her that she sent at 11.30 p.m. telling me that she would jot down my number. She also sent me her location which was now Phoenix near a tire shop. She also told me that in Phoenix they would make sure she paid everything and then they would take her to LA. I thought she was in the clear and sent her a congratulatory message and told her that LA was only several hours away and she had basically made it through the most difficult part. Those messages never got delivered until later in the day, but she never responded since then. She has not connected onto her phone since those messages I sent her on Wednesday, August 16th at 7 a.m. I don't know what happened to her, but I'm assuming that she either got forced into intimacy trafficking or forced labor. I believe they have confiscated her phone and passport and are making her pay for her trip across the U.S. The reason why I say this is because she was telling me how the smugglers were forcing her to pay for all the food, gas, etc. for the smugglers. During the four days that she was waiting to cross the border. She also told me they took her to a pawn shop where they inspected the value of her bracelet and that the smugglers were asking for more money to cross than they originally charged and she said that if she paid them everything she would only have $80 to her name by the time that she crossed. I do not think that she had enough money to make it all the way to LA once she reached Phoenix. And I think the traffickers are forcing her to pay for her trip to LA and have probably confiscated her phone, passport, etc.